So anyway, so I want to try to tie these these three ideas together. We have code theory and the idea of restriction. Then we have this idea of spatiotemporal codes. That is a code of nature like DNA, which uses tunneling, by the way. They, they have objects in space that change their position in space and they change their position and they change their, they have beats. So there's timing and they're in, in these spatiotemporal codes and there's distance and there's direction. So you're dealing with all these geometric things in a geometric spatiotemporal code. So, I'm, so we're saying that nature is a code, and we know that quasicrystals are codes. So we want to connect the idea of code theory, restriction, with the idea of information theory. But we have to introduce a new element. If we're serious about information, you, you cannot ignore the fact that if you have some beautiful lines of computer code that took you one billion bits. You, you cannot ignore the fact that when those beautiful lines of code have a lot of meaning, algebraic meaning or meaning in the simulation, but then you scramble them, you still have a billion bits. Nothing has changed on the conserved base information, but everything has changed on strata one, strata two, strata three, right? And in spatiotemporal codes, it's the same thing. And what is the code trying to do? What is everything composed of? Time and distance. So particles are each have each fermion has its own time, mm -hmm. which is composed of lengths, and each fermion is changing distance over over some measurement of somebody's time, and that's distance. So uh, so our code is concerned with distance. Distance wound is the clock times plus the sum of that plus the distance that the particle traverses or travels over over some measurement. So maybe we have to to study David Finkelstein's paper on uh, I believe nineteen sixty six. Pierre, uh, the one no, Pierre. Uh, no another, but from David Finkelstein named space time code. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because exactly. you are yeah. speaking about spatial temporal code, uh, yeah. he got this idea yes in the 60s or 70s, really old. And he's he's linked to us by synchronicity because yes. our friend is Tony Smith, and Tony's mentor was David Finkelstein, and David Finkelstein is the father of digital physics. Because if you go back in the literature, it's difficult to find somebody earlier than David Finkelstein who was talking about digital physics. Maybe somebody else was, but he was at least one of the, one of the fathers. Mm -hmm. So here's these ideas I want to connect. So we want to connect spatiotemporal codes. where restriction of vectors is the name of the game. If you have too many vectors, you're going to have a high entropy noisy system and your class 2, class 3, class 4 emergent strata of information will disappear. And those strata explode exponentially. So as soon as you have a system that is restrictive enough, which gets close to the non-zero limit, right, the non-zero limit, then what happens is then, and only then, does your strata one, two, three, four emergent hierarchy explode, and each one of those has, has loops to every other, because it's like the Bible, where when you order the letters as bits, the letters are the bits, you order them, but there's relationships between words, sentences, paragraphs, even a paragraph you read two chapters later has some relationship to the sentences in chapter one. So you have these links everywhere. And with spatiotemporal codes, the links are by empires, which are entang like entanglement. So, but if you chaotically order your empires, your QCs, you, you can destroy the entanglement links. 
in terms of the quasi-crystal principle of empires. You destroy it by random ordering, by increasing your, your chaos. So we want to connect this. So this is already connected to Boltzmann's en entropy. And it's connected to Shannon entropy. Others have done this. We don't have to do this. But this is known in the literature, the connection between these two. And this is trivial that if reality is a space-time code, then clearly it's dealing in information. But the missing idea is the emergent information that comes from complex systems theory is a clue. This special phase of the quasi-crystal phase where the magnitude of all quantum entanglement values from tunneling to to uh, it, uh, to entanglement itself goes exponentially high there and then it drops back down when it goes towards the zero limit and then it drops back down as it gets to you know 10 factorial 11 100 factorial right it it, it then behaves your, your 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 quantum correlations drop so down at the bottom of everything nature would use the code that is already set up as h3 symmetry because there's there is where the base the mat the algebra the moduli space algebra or the clifford algebra any formalism that you can apply to the same object that has the potential for the highest connectivity over time and non-local it can become a, it can become atoms can become topological quantum networks with ultra high quantum correlations because the underlying space is that way so but with the same underlying space you can still have chaos just by how you order 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 your sets so so then this connects down here ultimately to the fundamental value, which is LP, the Planck length. Or we can easily translate that into the tetrahedron. In other words, the trit. So, and, and, and this just comes down to distance. With so many trits, or frames, or bits, points on off, how much length can you express as the sum of clock cycles made of discrete lengths. See, I'm trying to draw a cycle with just a Eulerian circuit. So how many of these can you draw where there's a sum of the lengths plus forward propagation, you know, in discrete lengths? And if it can jump, if you can express the same pattern by skipping these and just doing a deflation and going all the way to here, like 10 to the 23 angstroms away, this is good. If you can do a binary action here, where there's another quasi-particle that gets expressed with that same action, that's good. But the timing must be right. You have to order things. Because if it's too high entropy, too much disorder in the ordering, then you don't get a lot of coincidence. How many coincidences can you get? I don't know, but you can get a lot. One binary point or one trick can express the clock cycle and the forward propagation of probably many different particles. There should be a limit, but, 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 but whatever that limit is, it's got to be with atoms, with, you know, at, at atomic scale. It has to be at the quasi-crystal phase because that's where all the anomalies in the literature are very uh, special. So anyway, that's what I'm going to try to do is try to connect these more because you see that there's an idea emerging here which is length for some quantity of conserved conserved bits so we say one billion bits or trits or frames but we but that's conserved and for that we can get the expression of a great deal of length because bits can serve multiple masters not just one or bits can jump longer distances. The average, the average length can start increasing from, say, an average of 10 to the negative 5 
or whatever it is, Planck lengths, it can start it can start increasing to much to much larger values. It can be larger than ten to the twenty three, which is which is the observed atomic phase on hops. Yes, so I believe that then where, when you have this jump, uh, it may be because uh, of the level of deflation. So you were, uh, uh, for example, uh, 10 level of deflation. So the distance is phi to the power 10 times the Planck scale. Mm -hmm. And then the jump is just an ordinary phase on flip, but yeah. at this scale level. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, but we have to to check that this really appears in the model. Mm -hmm. and, anyway. and also in time. In time also we have the mm -hmm. uh, inflation of uh, scale of time. How this is where the quasi crystal. Uh, How do you have the inflation on the scale of time? It's the fourth dimension of the of the Elzer Sloan Q. But I'm seeing time as the clock cycles, so it's length. And this so is one time. Yes, yeah, this is probably the local time. It's like clock cycle. But if you want a global time where everything is seen the same time, it will be a time which will the have frames. different scales. The frames. Um, the frames would be the the global time. Yes. So in other words, you can be you can be here, and then in one one frame next, you can be here. But we could slow you down and make you wait ten frames. No, it's that uh, your frame is connected to the next frame, but your frame is also connected to a frame to the next frame at the next level of deflation, and to the next frame at the other next level of deflation, which is in fact in fact saying that there is frequency, like the Fourier transform of time except that this is not harmonics which are multiple of two yeah. but they are all in the Fibonacci chain so right. it's uh, anharmonics right which converge kind of anharmonic right. Fibonacci uh, Fourier right. transform of time which in, which interestingly converge to integers yes right yeah. Fibonacci image uh, Lucas Lucas number Lucas integers Lucas numbers yes exactly okay but anyway thanks for letting me talk it helps me practice my thinking but I want to get it more clear to show you my other notes on a PowerPoint because there's some simple equation. So, you know, you guys like math, so you like to reduce and find the elegant. But then after that, then we find the complex systems interaction. So we use both the extreme reduction and extreme systems, you know, non local systems interaction. So, you know, quantum systems theory. So, okay, yeah, so maybe in a few days I will get it all together. Mm -hmm. But that's very good, very, very cool. Thanks for teaching me something on that 24 cell. Oh, I'm the expert in 24 cell. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks. Ray, what was that meaning about? Um, was about different them, but uh, principally about um, quasi crystal and the projection of the 36 vertex type, which is a D6 projection of the D6 quasi crystal. And so I explained to Clee that D6 is embedding D4, and uh, in D4 is made of octahedron because it's uh, the space filling uh, crystal of. Uh, the 24 cell and then Klee was surprised that it was space filling he was sure that uh, only you can space fill with uh, with hypercube in four dimension and then I show him the Wikipedia page uh, as there is three space filling in 4D and the most interesting is uh, this one the Icosa tetrachoric space filling Oops. 24 cell honeycomb or I cozy the tetrachorate honeycomb that I studied uh, 10 years ago and it's a regular space filling tessellation of the four dimensional space. So there is only 24 cells, nothing else. And, um, and also this is D4. Uh, and naturally we can include D4 into D6 
and the quasi crystal which is here uh, 36 vertex type is a projection of uh, d6 uh, six dimensional uh, uh, we can say checkerboard six dimensional checkerboard and so i got the idea that uh, it's very easy to get the points it's very easy to get the potential edge by computing the net bores at uh, distance 1 and distance 5, the golden ratio but after that to really compute where the cell are so it's very complicated, there is different algorithm and we explained that the algorithm that they were using before was not, not really valid, was quite random taking one cell and then looking around what happens and, and the problem is that for some cells you have only one choice here for this tetrahedron but for other here you have different possibility of decomposing this that's why you, you have a uh, edge which are on the face so this is in fact a dodecahedron which can be made by a tetrahedron but in different way you can for example cut here and here and then you will have one tetrahedron here one here one here but you can also cut here and there so you have several possibilities for some of the cells and um, if you have only the vertice you cannot choose the real possibility you have uh, it's a little like our concept of empire these are fixed but these have a degree of freedom uh, but then he explains that in fact some of the edge which are computed here are not really in the quasi crystal because it depends from where from what it is projected so that's why now I will go back to the octahedron in the D6 uh, for in the 6 dimension and um, project only this octahedron so I select only some points of the D6 in inside of the quasi crystal by the cut window uh, rule and uh, then inside of the quasi crystal I know what are the potential edge and then I have to go back to six dimension to look if this edge is also an edge in six dimension, an edge of uh, an octahedron. So we have, we try to find elegant and automatic algorithm to, to find the cell into a quasi crystal defined only as a set of vertices because then I will be able to apply this to the QSN and the, the target of the study is to compare the QSN to this quasi crystal so it's to compare different quasi crystal which have same apparently same symmetry same sub object but we which may be a little different okay thank you